And that is how a leash that can pull a car is created. Ira, this video is for you, buddy. Um, I wanted to show one of the ways that we make dog leashes here. Um, generally, I like the handle to be about 17 centimeters open. And so that means that I start here unwinding it and then I'm right-handed. So this is where this is where I do most of the work. Um, I want to make sure that I have a couple of inches of material and uh, one of the important things is I make sure that the handle is laid nicely. Um, if there were a slight twist in the rope or something, you can see that the, the handle acts a bit differently. So this is completely neutral. There's no extra twist to it. Um, the first thing that I do is I decide where I want this center piece to go. Um, I don't remember the name of this splice per se, but uh, I, I use this central one and I look for the first knot to go into. And then I twist the rope and I open it up, just like so. I take this yarn, I push it through. It's not extremely easy. This, this rope that I'm using right now is a Polish rope. Um, whatever twisting technique that they use compared to the Hungarian ropes that I normally use, it's, it's not easy to open. Um, this rope was actually made from scrap yarns that I use in my daily waxing production. So this is a hemp rope. Don't tell that to social media or the video will get banned. Um, and yeah, so this is done once and then I'll come around to the bottom. You can see here is this one. So this one will go under here, which is the one above it. And so once again, I'll, I'll twist it open, try to open it up more, just so I can get a little bit faster, stick my thumb in there. And there's really no fast way to do this either. It's time consuming, it's boring and tough on your fingers, but it works really, really well. It gives it a really nice looking result. Um, and then here's the one that we went under. This is the next one to go under. So I'm gonna open that up. Same thing as before. Also, sorry if I go off camera a little bit. I'm watching my work more than I'm watching the camera. Okay, so now that we've done all three strands, um, I like to wiggle it around a little bit. I also like to kind of put some of the twist back in it, make sure that all of the yarns are, are well put in. I double check the position of the handle itself. Uh, it can get a little bit kind of distorted from uh, putting these strands in. Like I can accidentally put a little bit of a twist in it. But you can see that it, there are 120 degrees in each direction and this handles a little bit twisted, so I'm gonna, I was just give it a little tug, make sure it kind of relaxes right here. This is pretty much locked in already. Um, it's not gonna go anywhere. But nonetheless, we take it to the next one, right? So you follow it down and you lift this one up here. So you go over top, and then back under. We do this twice, once for each. It just, it makes the handle like look a little bit better once you wrap it. Um, you know, for us, the end user might have to, you know, wrap the cover cord around it if the cover cord ever starts to get old, um, maybe that'll be replaceable, you know, need to be replaced, but, but 
the the main court itself should be fine. For a very long time, I have people who I've known who've had this style of leash that I've made them for years, and no no issues. It's as long as you take care of it. You know, you don't leave it outside. You don't let it get wet constantly. You know, these fibers are known for their incredible rot and fungal resistance in general. Um, actually, quite interesting. In the field, when the fibers are fresh, it's that it's that fungal rot that actually makes the fibers accessible in the first place. That's called redding. R-E-T-T-I-N-G, redding, field redding, do redding is what I'm talking about. So you can see here, uh, we got the over and under twice. Again, 120 degrees. I'm gonna go off camera really quick and just take a, take a razor blade. It's the easiest way to do it and just trim this off. And then we're gonna do the wrap. So you can see here, I trimmed everything. Um, so my goal here is pretty much this one inch area from where it ends all the way to this part is what I want to trim. Now the way that we cover the end is with hemp wick. This is a waxed yarn that we produce here uh, at the warehouse. Um, this is actually some of the rejected yarn from a project that we've done. It was probably rejected just because it didn't look perfect uh, for the customer, but this little guy uh, makes it super easy to wrap it around. If I just had like one meter of yarn just sticking out, it's actually, it's tough. It's tough just to wrap it. So the way that this works, I will I'll lay, lay this down so you can check and so you can see uh, the first thing I do is I make a little bit of a loop and this loop is what I'm going to end up wrapping around uh, and then this little tail here is what I end up pulling on later. You'll see. So the, the loop I always kind of have uh, diagonal and I, I try to put it in the um, kind of like a, a channel, right? Like you can see that it sets in there well. Um, I have the, the loop stick out from the bottom. So I will finish wrapping about here, and I'm gonna start wrapping about here. Uh, the first the first one is the most important. I always like, I like to, to go um, over the top, and then once I come back around here, um, beige on beige, I apologize if it's not super easy to see, but this is, this one, this one's pretty tight. Like I, I pull that tight. This doesn't have to be over tight though. Um, it doesn't have to be so tight that it just hurts your fingers. But you can see as I'm going around how the, the hemp wick roll just keeps giving me as much yarn as I need. Um, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking here and fast forward the video. Okay, now I've pretty much reached the end. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, this is the last, this is the last wrap and I'm going to cut it right there. And so now this little tail here will go into this loop and we'll end up hiding it underneath the wrap. So it's never going to come out. Again, the the rope could get compressed and the the wrap itself could kind of relax a little bit, especially um, if you hand wash the leash a lot. Uh, but now here's here's the magic. Take a pair of pliers and you pull. And as you can see here, just tucks it right in. And as soon as that tail disappears, uh, it's done. Now obviously this took a bit longer uh, than it normally would of me just 
making it uh, without putting it on camera. Uh, but that's, that is how you splice a rope and then make it look pretty on the end. And so we do that to both ends for our dog leashes. Um, I actually have a jig that this rope normally sets in. And that is how a leash that can pull a car is created.